so now uh, we are going to talk about how to get condition expectation when I do not have the sigma algebra g given by a countable partition of omega. So, how you generalize? So, in the case where we had this issue of countable partition, you know that we proved that there would exist a g measurable random variable E x by g such that integral E x by g d p over any a in g is same as integral of x d p over a, a belonging to g. Now, this idea cannot be so easily proved if you consider that g is just a sigma algebra. So, in many books, especially books of finance, they define the condition expectation x by g as follows. So, it is a random variable is a g measurable random variable, because that is what we proved earlier. So, we are assuming it. Yeah, okay. Well, random variable or v. And number two, whatever we have proved in the last class, in the last result, we want to assume that such a thing actually happens. That is integrating over this and integrating x are the same thing. So, this variable and x does not have much of a difference, that that is what one uh, the crude. So, this property is sometimes called partial averaging. So, this is the definition. So, conditional expectation is a G measurable random variable which satisfies this, which shows that this may not be unique. There can be any more than one G measurable random variable which can actually get you down to this, get you this. But the key question is whether such a G measurable random variable would at all exist. Okay, I am making a definition but try to generalize my last, I mean the result, last result of the last class, but how do I know that this such a thing, such a random variable would exist? If it does not exist, then such a thing is nonsense. To know that it exists, we need to go through some steps and get into some slightly deeper probability theory. We will not push you for proofs, etcetera. We will try to give you an information about how uh, things are done, what are the thought processes behind the steps, what that is required or tools that is required to prove that such a random variable would exist which will exhibit this property. Okay. One of the first steps is to know in uh, finance for and in probability theory is how to construct how to construct a new probability measure from an old one. That is the key question. So, in that sense, suppose you have a given probability space. So, whatever handwritten notes I have, I will see whether uh, when I finish delivering the lectures, I can hand it over to the MOOC support and staff who can actually, very good technical staff here, who can actually uh, scan it and put it up on the portal, so that you can see all these things. 
So, I cannot write down each and everything in detail which is written in the notes because I am just trying to explain you the real issues. So, here you we take a probability space and we take a random variable and I assume that this random variable is non negative. You can assume it in the sense of almost everywhere, but ok let us for the moment assume that x omega is greater than 0 for every uh, instance omega. Now, also assume e of x is equal to 1. You see once I know this, then I construct for a in the sigma algebras, if a is a event, then construct the following function of a. This q, which is actually taking an element of the sigma algebra and mapping to r, given this, inter, in, this is integrable. So, so, suppose that x is integrable actually, then this q generates a new probability measure. So, then q ok maybe I will write it slightly like this, no, no maybe I will not do this because that will make it look like rational numbers. Here. So, this q is a probability space. That is absolutely fundamental. So, given a probability measure, I can construct a new probability measure in the following way. So, another interesting property that we have is that if y is a random variable, is a random variable on and suppose I can integrate then for any a that you have in f. So, this is nothing but, so this is additional result. So, this is the key step where you have constructed the new probability measure. Finance is very important how to move from one probability measure to the other. An important result that can be shown is that suppose P of A is 0. Okay. Then in this particular case, it would imply that q of a is equal to 0. This is called q being absolutely continuous with respect to p. So, if you have an a for which p of a is 0, then q of a is also equal to 0. This is fundamental which comes out from here, this definition. So, here you see Q. Now, how do I know that q is a probability measure? Because you see q of omega is integral omega x dp and this is nothing but expectation of x which I have taken to be 1. So, probability of the sure event omega that whole sample space must be 1. This is something very, very important that it is truly a probability measure. And you can show that this will happen. So, the interesting question that we now can ask comes from here. 
So, if I have a situation where P is a probability measure and Q is a probability measure on both on. So, P, Q are both probability measures on omega f. So, we have this probability space and we have this probability space also. Right. So, this probability space and this probability space, but we also have this connection that P a equal to 0 would imply Q a equal to 0, whenever P a is 0, Q a is 0. Then is Q a probability measure constructed out of P? So, which means the question is can Q be constructed out of P? This answering this question leads to a deep result called the Radon Nicodem theorem and then random variable that will which will require to construct Q in this manner, the one which we have already shown in the pre this result. That random variable would be called the Radon Nicodem derivative and this is a very, very famous result in uh, measure theory and in probability also, it is called the Radon Nicodem theorem. So, just take this for information, do not get too worked up because you are not going to really use Radon Nicodem theorem in such a way in your actual practice of finance, but it is good to have some additional information. So, what does Radon Nicodem theorem tell me? Radon Nicodem theorem tell me the following, tells me that uh, okay, very good. So, you have this information. If P a equal to 0 implies Q a equal to 0, so a is of course, element of f and a is element of f, a must be an event of course, otherwise you do not compute the probability. Then there exists a random variable y which is non negative and integrable. This is a very deep result because you are proving the existence of something. Every existential results in mathematics are deep results. It is not easy to prove that something actually exists. Whether you are able to really and calculate it that is a different matter, but the question of its existence is a very, very important issue in the way modern mathematical thinking goes. So, so you are telling that such a thing would actually be there and so then there exists random variable this which is integrable such that Q of A can be constructed in the following manner. See why, why you need to talk about a positive random variable not just any random variable taking any value. You need to talk about a positive random variable whether it is here or here because then you will always have q a greater than equal to 0. If you put phi here it will become 0, it will put omega here it is 1. So, that is a true probability measure q, q a values are lying between 0 and 1 because here for because x is non negative this will always be greater than equal to 0 and that is why you need to talk about a non negative random variable. Okay. So, you will always get this, there would always exist a integral random variable, non negative random variable such that this will happen. Of course, E of y would be 1 because you already now know that the probability measure is q is a probability measure. So, q of omega is 1, so expectation of y is 1. So, let now interesting fact is that this is a unique unique up to the up to a measure means it says that if z is z greater than equal to 0 is a random variable such that q of a can also be written like this for every a element of f. Then it implies that 
y and equal to z almost surely that y and z every agree at every omega except on a set of omega of measure 0. So, this is of essentially unique. So, this y is usually written as d q d p the adon nicotine derivative of q with respect to p given p u and q are absolutely continuous measure means q is absolutely continuous with respect to p. So, once you so this is a this is the radon nicotine theorem which tells you that okay if you can construct a probability measure you can always if you have random variable like this you can always construct a probability measure for which this property will hold and the reverse says that if this property holds this will you will always get a non negative random variable for which would be able to through which you are able to represent the measure q in terms of the I mean probability measure q in terms of the probability measure p. But these two things uh, sum up to give you I am not you can I am not there is no time to really write down proofs, but I am trying to tell you that these two results these two ideas sum up to prove the existence of a random variable which will satisfy exactly what we seen in the definition of conditional expectation in the general setup. So, existence of conditional expectation So, what does this what does this result say? So, let us assume the starts with this fact that x be an integrable random variable on a, on the probability space integrable random variable on of this probability space okay. and g subset of f is a sub sigma field ok all are we could just say sigma field sigma field or sigma algebra sigma field or sigma algebra which have whatever term you want to use you can use sigma algebra on then there exists a random variable E x y g on so this is an important result which is integrable. So, this sign is very common to mathematician this means there exists. So, then there exists a random variable on this on the probability space such that the partial averaging property which we are written down actually holds. So, this so it shows that though this random variable may not be unique, but such a random variable do exist and exhibits this partial averaging property. So, this is true for all a you take in the sigma algebra g with that respect to which you are doing the conditioning. Now, the interesting part is this following. So, suppose y is a random variable on this probability space omega f p and integral a y d p is equal to integral x d p over a for all a in g, then it implies that y is equal to the conditional expectation of x given g almost surely or almost everywhere. So, any, any random variable y which satisfies this property must be same as the conditional expectation that is the fundamental idea. So, that that also shows that 
this is really not unique, you can just find some y which satisfies this, that is it, that is which is g measurable that. So, of course, y has to be g measurable. So, if you can find any g measurable function this will just work. Now, I will state the properties of conditional expectation. I will not give the proof of the properties. The proof of the properties would be coming through exercises. You will be asked to give a proof of the properties and then the proof would be given in your homework. Maybe if there is time, time permits, I will try to do for one and not each and everything. So, let me write down the properties of conditional expectation. So, these are important properties used very often in finance. So, it is uh, important to know this properties of conditional expectation. So, what is the first property? First property is taking out what is known. Number one property is called the taking out what is known property. So, what do I mean by this? So, now suppose I have two random variables x and y and I say that x and x into y that is x omega into y omega for the omegas what when you compute them is integrable. Is integrable and x is g measurable. Then, so x is g measurable means g contains all information about x, that is the meaning. So, that is the meaning of something is known. So, x is essentially known by knowing g. So, the nature of x is completely revealed to g. So, this is nothing but x into expectation of this is the thing. Number 2, expectation of expectation of x by g is expectation of x. This is a very simple thing, this property, because if you use a partial averaging property, what does it mean? What does expectation of a thing means? Integral omega expectation of x by g, this means this and this means omega x d p and that is expectation of x. So, this is a partial averaging property and this nothing it gives me this. So, this is true for any a in g and of course, omega the whole space a is in g because g is a sigma algebra. So, as I have told you in the very beginning that the whole omega has to be an null event and sure event has to be the whole sample space has to be in any sigma field. So, that is it and this is nothing but the expectation of expectation of x by g. So, you have taken the expectation of this random variable which is this and by partial averaging it is this and which gives you this. This property 2 then we come to property 3 and property 4. Property 3 is called independence. So, if x and g are independent, I will explain to you what I, what I mean. If x and g are independent, you will be very surprised that I am talking about independence of a random variable with respect to a sigma algebra. I will tell you what is that. Mathematicians hardly they mix up lot of language. So, if x and g are independent, then 
basically x does not depend on g. So, the conditional expectation of g is basically a constant random variable. For any omega that you take, this gives you the value E x. What do I mean by x and g being independent? By the term x and g being independent, I mean that if you take any a element of g, how do I identify the element a? How do I say that the event a has occurred? Event a, if I take, I look at the outcome of a random experiment, some omega has occurred in the sample space. If that omega remains in, is in a, then I say that the event a has occurred. For example, I throw a die and the event a is that the odd an odd number occurs. If I say that the number 3 has occurred, then I say that the event A has occurred. So, which means this event A can be identified in terms of a random variable I A, the indicator function. So, where I A is a function defined as follows, where I A omega is equal to 1 if omega is in A and is equal to 0 if omega is not in A. So, which means that x and i a, where a is element of g, these are independent. So, these are for any a in g are independent random variables. So, these are random variables independent random variables. That is the meaning of the fact that x and g are independent. So, if these are independent, so, x really does not depend upon the occurrence of any event in G, then of course, this is the case. Third and the last property which is used pretty often is a tower property. So, it is very important for you to learn these properties. So, you will have exercises to work on. So, what do you do? you have a sigma field h, which is contained in the sigma field g, which is contained in the sigma field f. So, this is this both sorry f i e l d. So, both g and h are sigma fields, which is contained in the sigma field h. Then the property that we have is the following that expectation of expectation of x by g given h is same as expectation. So, conditional expectation of the random variable E x by g given that h has occurred is same as sorry E x by h. So, this is something uh, I would uh, like you to remember. So, these are four properties that you learn about conditional expectation are just very crucial. So, a lot of things you have to use repeatedly when you study finance and when you start studying martingales. Uh, martingales are something used for uh, when it comes a term actually comes out with gambling. So, you are gambling and then as time passes more information is revealed and if you have some information now what is your expected gain or profit or expected income or expected uh, whatever you want to say expected uh, pay off at the next time. So, that is what Martingales talks about and that is what we are going to learn in the next class is very interesting and hope because at the end stock market is gambling. At the end the stock market keeping money in the stock market is gambling, but people do keep uh, money in the stock market because uh, the rate of at which money grows in the stock market if everything goes on is much faster than if you keep it in the money market which is fixed deposit like or invest in government bonds. So, it is very important that uh, you have to have an understanding of this. If you really want to know in the second part of the course how derivatives are priced, of course, some derivative pricing will uh, of course, come in here. We will talk about at the end when we learn eto calculus, we will learn to apply eto calculus, we will talk about how to compute derivative rates, we will talk about uh, what is the actual behavior of the stock prices, uh, a pretty good model called the geometric Brownian motion, all these things will come gradually and but these properties will become pi all there. And as a result, I would like you to remember and 
use these properties, do these exercises which is given as associated with this conditional expectation in a pretty uh, serious way and may at least learn this part very well. Of course, the internet is there you can keep on looking at it, uh, but here the course is basically to give you some understanding, maybe we will do slightly better than the internet, but anyway uh, you can use whatever resources you want, but these things have to be known very well. Thank you very much.